biggest asset we have to this citizen science program is putting boots on the ground and getting, ensuring that data is collected and mountain goats are not forgotten about. That's why we exist to give mountain goats a voice. The reason we're doing it in the Bridgers here is because there's a lot of other fantastic research that's going on. There's some, there's some collaring research, there's some disease research, and this survey helps to give a nice rounded kind of foothold to that whole research and it makes it a full complete package so we can really look at the Bridgers as a very key like ideal mountain goat population. What does health look like? What do good populations look like? What do good dynamics look like? We hope to be able to tell that story here and f use that further not only throughout Montana but other areas where we need to bring back goats that are no longer there. The citizen science work, it's done great for goat conservation. There's times we can get in the helicopter and get great counts, but there's times and places where we can't. And the Bridgers are one of them. The goats move a lot at night, they're in and out of the trees, they're in unexpected places, they hear the helicopter coming, they get into caves or shelter. So I've never been able to fly the Bridgers well. But when we put people on the ground, we were really able to see them and, and get really good counts. And the reason that's important is it goes right back to the number of tags that we allocate. Because of the survey effort we did in the Bridgers, 2017, 2019, we were able to put out an extra license. Well, we're up here doing a mountain goat survey with the Rocky Mountain Goat Alliance. Uh, hiked up in here, it took a couple hours to get here, and everybody gets assigned a certain area. And this is our area. We're supposed to keep glassing and looking and find some goats and I'm excited to do it because it's what we call citizen science and conservation as a volunteer and all those kind of things. And so it feels really good as a biologist to know what's going on with the goats in such a way that I can issue the right number of tags to keep goats on the mountain and to keep hunters engaged with their wildlife. I want our audience to know what you guys do at the Rocky Mountain Goat Alliance, but I also want them to know that the, the science is, can benefit from volunteerism and from citizens going out and doing this stuff and you know last night we had that I'll call it orientation that you and Julie did and showed the video great video of really how how to identify nannies versus billies but then go into the next step of how it's so important that if you're even questioning is it a nanny or a billy you should pass because of what the long-term consequences are to a herd with, with an animal with the low productivity of goats. But I think people who may shoot an nanny probably just don't understand that. You know, you're taking an adult out of this population and it was four years before she could even become, right. you know. And if she's got a kid with her, that kid will likely not survive on its own. If they don't do the adoption thing that, that, that someone gets to do. Yeah. We want to be the voice for Mountain Goat so that they're not forgotten. They need a voice. They're such a unique species, so, so cool. And they live in such cool places. Well, should we roll off here before we got to do it by headlamp? Sounds good to me. really appreciate your time today, Lee. I, I appreciate you, Randy. Thank you so much for being here. Yep, thank you. So there you have it, folks. We're about ready to head off the mountain, but... I'm going to ask you to do something. You know I'm pretty big into the conservation gig. I want you to go to the goatalliance.org and sign up and be a member. It's the least we can do. If, if we're interested in these native species that are some of our most treasured and rare species, when folks are working hard and giving a voice to them and advocating for them, goatalliance.org.